Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, friends and colleagues from across the world. Welcome to our second edition Podinar of the weekend, uh, where we have a special guest from all the way across the world in the Middle East, Dr. Abdul Jalil Azad. Um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Good evening. It's my honor to present a lecture which is organized by the Global Summit Institute. Thank you. Before introducing you to our audience, which have asked credentials, uh, and the topic today, which is, will be about the emergence profile around One Piece implants, very interesting topic, given the limitations yes. of One Piece implants. Using yes. the VPI cervical system, yes. um, uh, we are looking forward to this lecture. What we will uh, do a quick housekeeping of uh, ongoing uh, uh, matters with the Institute, uh, friends and colleagues. Um, you will be able to uh, claim and register for your CE at the end of the session by following the link that will be posted in the comment section. Uh, please feel free to leave your questions uh, uh, there as well so we can uh, respond to them uh, readily and in a timely fashion. Um, the, the Global Summit Institute has expanded and grown into pharmacy, optometry, chiropractic, and medicine, where it all started in dentistry. Now there are hundreds of leading doctors across the world from some 90 plus countries that are participating in this project as we help collaborate and uh, bring our colleagues together more. I invite you to send your uh, uh, doctor friends that you find to be uh, um, of similar ideology into our uh, nomination process, top 100 DOC doc, top 100 doc.com dash nomination to submit a, a very short nomination so we can uh, pass it on to the election community as well as the regions of the Institute. Um, and last but not least, um, uh, you uh, are welcome to uh, register for a new program that we launched, the Doctorate of Healthcare Business at the UniversalSchoolOfHealth.com. So, Doc, um, Getting yes. to your credentials and your background, you have had a very uh, impressive run at it. Um, uh, for the audience that may or may not know you, you were just elected to the world's top 100 doctors in representation of Iraq. And uh, uh, he is a 36 year old um, doctor from Erbil, Kurdistan, Iraq. And uh, Dr. Ab Abdul Jalil Azad is also a specialist. He has a Bachelor of Science an MS in oral and maxillofacial surgery and a PhD in oral and dental implantology, which he received in 2020. Uh, working part-time in college dentistry, Haller Medical University, Kurdistan, Iraq, as a lecturer in oral and maxillofacial department since 2018. He gives uh, theoretical lectures to undergraduate students from D3 and D4 and D5 class of College of Dentistry and also serves as a clinical supervisor, undergraduate research coordinator, plus editorial assistant in the Herbal Dental Journal in the same college. He has multiple publications in many national and international scientific journals, uh, most of them relating to dental implantology. He's also a key opinion leader for TRAIT, a dental implant manufacturing company. And he also serves as a scientific advisor and clinical consultant for the same. Um, and he has uh, much experience and background in international and domestic lectures. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on. Why don't you tell us about your motivation? What brings you uh, to uh, continue the passion and love for learning and earning uh, advanced degrees? Thank you, Dr. Shah, for uh, your nice introduction. Uh, yes, uh, really, when I found the uh, list that's nominated for the uh, 100 talk for the 2021. And then later on also, uh, I filled the requirements to be nominated for 2022. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Inshallah, I will try for this lecture. I present something interesting about the One Piece implant. The one piece implant is very, very interesting. Um, there's all sorts of uh, concepts that they have tried to develop it. Now the ceramic guys came in and did the one piece implants. 
Um, there are challenges with one piece implants and, and some doctors like bending them in the mouth, some don't, some can be prepped, some can't. Uh, there's yes. angulation issues. So we're very excited to see um, what you bring into the table. As you know, for many decades, we have had these bendable type implants. Yes. And for many decades, we've been trying to solve solutions to the angulation problem with the screw retained. And then you got micro pumping and bacterial ingrowth and you have- yes, that's right. You have uh, all of these complications, screw loosening, uh, yes. fracturing of parts. So from a bone driven perspective of implantology, I think it's a great idea because you can solidify your implant in a straight line approach. But today you're gonna show us about uh, emergence profile, which is also very important. Um, yes. Some contemplate that the neck of the implant has to be three, four, five millimeters to give you that kind of a emergence that you want. Some contemplate there are other systems like cervical that you can use. So I'm very excited to learn uh, from you and uh, you let the doctor PhD uh, uh, teach us a couple of lessons. Um, with yes. that said, doctor, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mute out. You, you will have the floor. And you're yes. uh, welcome to present uh, and uh, we look forward to, and congratulations, by the way, for your dedication and uh, your contributions to the healthcare professions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Okay. Okay. Looking good. Okay. Good. So the title for my presentation is about the mastering the emergence profile by cervical system for one piece implant. And about the objectives of this presentation, we all know now one piece implant uh, used by many clinicians. And however, in the last years, they were accepted as a treatment option for many clinical cases. But despite the clinical success of one piece implants, there are some concerns, as Dr. Shah said, regarding, for example, the challenges regarding the parallelism of the one piece implant, plus to that, some concerns regarding the soft tissue around the neck of one piece implant, especially in the aesthetic zone. So the aim, the purpose of this lecture is to discuss the ways of optimizing the soft tissue around one piece dental implant. This is really very challenging for the one piece implant, because we all know for the two piece implant, we can use the gingival former, plus to that, we can use the provisionals very more, very simply. But in case of the one piece, regarded as a challenge. So I try in this presentation, how to provide the patient with a very nice emergence profile. And later on, of course, for more success rate, long-term success rate for the dental implant solutions. Uh, this is a paper. Okay, uh, in which we all know one of the problem is related to the dental implantology is the uh, periimplantitis. This is one of the report from the sixth European workshop on periodontology, and they found periimplant mycocytes occurring about eighty percentage of these subjects, and the periimplantitis in between twenty eight to fifty six percentage of these subjects which is really a very big range of the peri-implantitis problem. One of the problem is related to that the, is the plaque accumulation around, around the implant, especially around the one piece implant. How we can control the emergence profile around the implants and to ensure to avoid the peri-implantitis at, at all. Okay. The tools and materials that used in this presentation is the VPI cervical system. And secondly, one piece implants, compressive and basal implants from the root implant system trade company. In the beginning, I will try to uh, present a case which treated uh, by the two piece implant. And then I use the cervical system for the two piece implant. Okay. This is the clinical case. As you see here, the radiograph, and this is the clinical picture regarded as hopeless tooth. So after giving anesthesia, we 
extracted the roots. And then after that, we tried to use the radical airborne between the, the extracted roots. And as you see, this is the prepared implant bed. Then after that, we used the VPI cervical system, which is a very useful tool, aid you to master the emergence profile around the dental implant. One of the uses of this kit is by this way, you can measure the mesiodistal dimension that you have in the area of the implant placement. And then we fabricated the customized healing abutment for the patient by using the cervical mold of the VPI cervical system. Of course, it's uh, very simple to make a, a healing abutment like that, a customized healing abutment. It needs about only two minutes to three minutes to make a healing abutment for the patient. So we use the root form from the root implant system. Then as you see here, we place the implant inside the implant bed. And here we have type B socket classifications because we have classifications for molar extraction sites for immediate dental implant placement. We have class A, as you, as you see in, the, in this picture. Here we have the implant hole surrounded by the bone that we have in the radicular bone. In case of the class B, like in our case, it is partially surrounded by the bone. And in case of the class C, maybe we don't have any radicular bone, so it's better to use wider implant. So here we have type B socket classification. And in this type of, this cl of the classification after dental implant placement in the molar uh, area, of course, we have to use the bone graft. So all the space that we have is filled with the bone graft like that. And then we use the customized healing abutment that's fabricated by the VPI cervical system like that, as you see. So in order to get a nice emergence profile for the implant. And this, this is the periapical X-ray after surgery, as you see. Then this is after four months. Then we removed the customized healing abutment from the patient's mouth by using the uh, removal tool from the surgical kit, which is provided by the trade company. Then this is the result, as you see. We have a very nice emergence profile which is created by the customized healing abutment. And all the thanks goes to the VPI cervical system. Then we sent the impressions to the lab and they fabricated a, a crown for us with sucrutide fixation, zirconium type. Here it's now more clear. We have a very nice emergence profile for the crown that's created by the lab. Then after that, we fixed and secrete the prosthetic crown, which is made from the zirconium on the implant. So this is the last result as you see, and the whole of the screw is covered with a layer of composite. And as you see in the picture, we have a very nice keratinized gingiva around the crown. Of course, it provides the aesthetic for the patient and plus to that, it will aid in the success for the implant because the plaque accumulation will be away from the neck of the implant. And this is the periapical of the case. This is about the two-piece implant and how to use the cervical system for two-piece implant. But can we use the cervical VPI cervical system for the one-piece implant? Yes, of course. But plus to that, let's to talk a little bit about the one-piece implant. We all know in case of the one-piece implant, the whole implant, the abutment and the fixture comes in one piece. So we don't have any screws. We don't have the pro problems related to the screw loosening, uh, the breakage of the screw, no stripped heads of the implant. It's breakage resistance. Why? Because we have a solid mass of the implant. We don't have any holes inside the implant. It's very high torque resistance. 
of course, it saves the expenses and also it saves the time for both of the patient and the operator. And this is one of the articles, which is the title of the article, Long-Term Outcome of One Piece Implants. And the result is implant survival rate for one piece implant of 96.79 percentage after five years of the follow-up. So how we can master the emergence profile around the one-piece implant? Sure, we can use the VPI cervical system. So I will start with this case presentation. As you see here, we have this retained root at the right upper first premolar. And this is the clinical picture for the same case as you see. We have this hopeless tooth after giving anesthesia to the patient, of course. We did extraction for the retained root, and this is the extraction socket for the patient. Then now I use the, the VPI cervical system, which is composed of two kits. Number one, we have the cervical guide. By the cervical guide, you can measure the mesiodistal width that you have at the area of the implant placement, because for each tooth, it has three measurements, small, medium, and large. And of, co of course, according to the gingival phenotype. So cervical system is a very simple and efficient tool to shape up the soft tissue around implants and also, also of course, ensure health and aesthetics at the same time. As I said, the cervical system includes two kits. We have cervical mold, as you see in the picture. And also we have a cervical guide. And as you see, this is the kit. This is the cervical mold. For each shape of the mold, as you see, provide you the emergence profile for, for example, for the anterior teeth, for the premolars, and also for the molars. This is about, about the cervical guide. Here we have the guide for the anterior teeth, for the premolars, for molars, which comes into two shapes. We have square molars and elongated molars. And for each part of the mouth, for example, for the premolars, we have small, medium, and large. And also for the anterior teeth, of course, we have small, medium, and large. Usually, Media, the small one used for the lateral incisor, the medium one used for the canine, the large one used for the central incisor. And for premolars, as we said, we have small, medium, and large. Of course, it depends on the size of the tooth. For example, we have very large tooth. Some of the patients, they have, for example, small premolar. It depends, of course, on the large of the ridge and of course, on the soft tissue uh, phenotype. For the molars, of course, we have small, medium, and large. Okay. In this way, we can connect the cervical guide to this handle like that, and then we can check the cervical profile of the extracted ridge like that. And in case if you have thick gingiva, it's better, of course, to use the large one. But if you check that we don't have enough soft tissue, we will choose usually the medium one or the uh, small one from the uh, guide. Also, in the cervi cervical guide, we have this cylindrical tabs in the middle, as you see, which is used in case you can make the drilling through the hole of these cylindrical taps. Because sometimes you may feel you may feel you are drilling in the center of the ridge, but when you take the X-ray, it goes a little bit maybe to the mesial or distal. So this tool is very simple and it's provided in the cervical guide. Okay. Regarding the cervical mold, the cervical mold, after you chose the the, sh the shape and the size of the, uh, what's needed on the, according to the side of the extraction. Now we are going to the cervical, cervical mold. 
By the cervical mold, you can make a customized healing abutment very simply in your clinic within minutes. And I will show you in this presentation, uh, which I did for one of the cases, like that, as you see, by placing the abutment inside the mold. After that, you place the flowable composite incrementally, then followed with the light cure. In my case, as you see, I use the impression post of the one piece implant, or you can use the burnout, which is provided by the company. In case if you are using the impression post, it's better to cut the wing, the wing is like that in the upper right picture, because it will not go too much down in the mold. But when we are using for the molar, it's, it's better to use and not cut the wings. Why? Because it will provide more attention for the a customized healing abutment. Okay, then of course we place the flowable composite incrementally, then we light cured. Or sometime I make grooves with the aid of uh, turbine with the bear. Why? To provide more retention for the uh, composite. Okay, like that, as you, as you see, it's covered and filled with the composite, and of course, it's light cured. So the result, now we created a very nice uh, healing abutment, customized healing abutment for the patient by using the VPI cervical system. Okay. Then, of course, we placed the dental implant. In this case, we used the one-piece implant. Then after that, we fixed the customized healing abutment with the aid of cement, as you see, like that. Then we removed the excess cement. Then after that, we supplanted the customized healing abutment with the adjacent tooth with the use of acid itching, then bonding, then after that, the flowable composite, like that. As you see, this is the flowable composite. And then we can contour the, the customized healing abutment. And of course, checking the high spot because now it's immediate loading. But why we are splitting the temporary crown? Because we all know it's an immediate loading and we have multi planes of the uh, forces and movements on the implant, especially in case of single implant placement. In case of single implant placement, we have multi planes like that. As you see in this picture, we have rotational movement. We have bacopalatal plane of movement. Also, we have the uh, mesiodistal forces on the crown. So splinting is mandatory to get success for the implant. And in case if you use two implants, uh, we eliminate the forces like rotation and mesiobacal planes of forces, but still we have the uh, bacopalatal uh, plane of the force. And in case of three implants, of course, we have less planes of movements on the implant and we have more chances of the implant success. Why? Because each one holds the other one. And in case of full arch, of course, it's better. This is why, for my case, as you see, I did splinting like that, as you see. Why? Because to avoid the, the forces and the planes of the movement, like rotational movement, mesiobacal, and palato buccal movements. Okay. Like that. And of course, it, it provides the patient with um, an acceptable temporary crown for a, a while, of course, because it remains inside the patient's mouth for about two to three months. So aesthetically, it's acceptable. And this is the result. As you see, we get a very nice emergence profile for the one piece implant, which is really very challenging. Plus to that, we can see we have a very nice keratinized gingiva. So all the fight with the plaque will be away from the neck of the implant. And this is another picture for the same case. After removal of the customized healing abutment and the temporary crown was created by the VPI cervical system. And as you see, we have a very nice emergence profile. Now the challenge, how we can get a master cast with the same shape and dimension of the soft tissue like inside the patient's mouth. And again, it's very easy because we, ha we have the VPI cervical system. We can use the 
what's called duplicate impression posters for making customized impression posters. We place the analog inside this part, what's called duplication. Then we power uh, the heavy body or any type of the impression. Then after that, we place the customized healing abutment was created at the first time by using the Cervico VPI system. Then when the heavy body gets set, we remove the temporary crown and a space like that is created. Then of course, we place the impression post. Then after that, we power incrementally a layer of the composite and then of course, followed, followed with light cure like that. Then of course, this is a, a very nice customized impression post, which, which can be done very easily within minutes in your clinic. Then we placed the customized impression post inside the patient's mouth like that. And we took the impression by using the monoface impression material. And this is the impression as you see. And then of course, we place back the analog inside the customized impression post and we send it for the lab. And then of course, we have to place again the customized healing abutment. Why? Because if we don't place the customized healing abutment inside the patient's mouth over the implant, within hours, all the emergence profile that's created will be ruined. So this is the master cast that the lab will work on. And this is a very nice zirconium crown, which is made by one of the great lab in our region, Karim Dental Lab. And as you see, we removed the customized healing abutment in the next visit, and we fixed the final crown, as you see, like that. And now we have very nice keratinized gingiva around the crown and around the implant. And this is the periapical X-ray. As you see, we have very good fitness of the processes with the abutment, which is again regarded as one challenge, uh, which is regarding the one-piece implant, how to make a very fit processes with the abutment. But by following this technique, we can get very nice fitness of the processes with the abutment. So with this technique that I followed for this case, we provide the patient with temporary crown, which is very good for the patient aesthetically. Also, we could supplant the implant very easily because otherwise we have to send, we have to make the impression, then we send the impression to the lab, then the lab will make the temporary crown. But in this technique that we followed, we made the temporary crown in our clinic very simply, very easily by using the VPI cervical system in a very short time. Plus to that, because it's made from the composite, uh, flowable composite, we can make very fixed and rigid splinting of the implant with the adjacent tooth. So this is one of the advantages of this technique. And of course, and obtaining very nice emergence profile, as we said, which is a very big challenge regarding one piece implant. Okay. And of course, we can obtain the master cast because you can get very nice emergence profile for the patient, but what's the solution for, for that? So the VBI cervical system make the whole technique very easy and in a very predictable way. This is another case. As you see here, we place the customized healing abutment for the patient. And this is the result after we removed the customized healing abutment was created by the VPI cervical system. But if you note, not like the first case, in the first case, the implant was in the middle of the ridge, I mean buccopalatally. But here, it's located more palatally. So what's the solution for that? Again, the VPI cervical system make the mold provide you with two molds. One of them is located at the center of the ridge, which is called centered mold. And the other one is off-centered. It's located more lingually or palatally. So it provides you with more solution according to the case.
So it's now very clear. We can see it's located more palatally and we got very nice emergence profile, even if the implant is located in the palatal. Okay. Another case, this is again, area treated in the, in the region of the premolar and we get a very nice emergence profile. Again, it's located more palatally and this is the crown. We got very nice emergence profile and we got enough keratinized gingiva. So the aesthetic will be better, of course. Plus to that, the success rate will be more in case we have the emergence profile because the aesthetic will be better and we can avoid the peri-implantitis. Okay. And this is again, the same prosthesis for this case. You see, we have very nice keratinized gingiva around the crown. Okay. What about molar? This is a one piece used for the molar region. Again, we have very nice emergence profile for this case. This is another view, view for the case and we got a nice emergence profile. Uh, what about in case using the one piece in the aesthetic region? Because many said we cannot use a one piece implant in the aesthetic region. Maybe yes, that's right. Little bit is it's challenging, but I think if we mix the one piece implant with the VPI cervical system, we can get results, very nice emergence profile and results like that, as you see. Why? Because the emergence profile that you see here and the way that the VPI cervical system provide you the simplicity and the result, as you see like that, really make the challenge very easy. Okay. So thanks for you listening. Please, if you have any comments or any questions regarding my presentation, you can leave in the comment section. Thanks again.